walk on right now. I'm in Queens, and I'm in here at Kaz's birthday party, and I'm about to rip this shit straight up. News 12's Noel Lilly spoke with legendary rapper KRS-One as we count down the days to hip-hop's 50th anniversary. 50 years after the groundbreaking genre took the world by storm, people in this same borough will get the chance to learn more about the people and history that make the culture so special. KRS-One is a Bronx native and hip-hop legend. Leading up to hip-hop's B-Day on August 11th, he and other figures in the culture will host never-before-seen historical exhibits and programs, plus free and tuition-based courses, including one called a hip-hop masterclass. There will also be a global logo competition. We really are understand the culture of hip-hop that it's not just about the music and the dance it's about the struggles of everyday people this was always the original intent of hip-hop to bring all kinds of diverse and different people together in peace in love in unity safely having fun these people want the war <laughs> Take me off the road. Because I'm looking at too much Greek. Look. I'm surrounded. This is what Kush must have felt like. But, oh yeah, let's have, oh yes. Oh, the solution. The solution. You know what, not even the balance. Look at the foundation. How this is under this. Yes. That's how they came. They built their temples and their churches on top of our shit. Let's get this rolling. Like I said, this original nothing is stolen. What we're doing is we teaching the class. And this is the way we're teaching it. Right here in the flash. Now my man's playing music. This is how we used to do it. We used to Got it going on. He got the cello. This dude blows a horn. She's singing. Damn, she's bringing. Whatever she's singing, got your mind tingling. Come on. This is how we teach from the artwork. This is a real MC. I make your neck work. Yeah. Let's go right here. You see my man playing that right there. You got him all on the microphone of 50 years ago. He was on the saxophone. That used to be the mic in the 30s. Standing next to him, I'm not even worried. These dudes were pretty and dirty. Look how I do it when I use. It's called the blues. That was early hip-hop. The blues spitting it on your 
your block. But since this is the foundation, this is what happened after colonization. You better hear me when I speak. This is Africa. This shit is great. a hip-hop preservation ministry archive school in society we believe that the best way to preserve hip-hop is to actually preserve the participants of hip-hop the original people who discovered hip-hop uh, at its first inception this is who we are going to preserve because they will carry the culture and pass it on to their children so that it has its pathway into the future we're here at 1520 Central Avenue in the Bronx right now. Five days ago on April 25th, our teacher had a press conference of which he officially announced the 1520 hip hop exhibit that we are going to be putting in a room that's technically right behind you. This exhibit is going to be flanked with art from our artists graffiti artists, uh, some of the most masterful artists of our culture are contributing their artwork to this exhibit. It's gonna be something phenomenal, something that nobody has really ever done before. And it's going to lift our culture up. It's gonna lift our artists up into really the best artists in the world, which technically they already are. So let's not waste no time. Let's take a look at the unveiling of 1520's hip hop exhibit. First, before we begin, it is important that you know a bit of the story regarding this 1520 community center and the fully functioning apartment building that houses it. It is here that we honor and recognize the staff the activists, the artists, the city officials, and the building owners that came together to ensure the preservation and further development of this historic space. Yes, in 2023, we are celebrating hip hop's 50th year, and we are celebrating it here at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Morris Heights section of the Bronx. But just some 16 years ago, this 102 unit complex became a target for aggressive investment practices, which led to property neglect, and the tenants of 1520 receiving a surprise eviction notice from the building owner informing them that the building was being sold and that they had, no, they had one year to vacate. This is happening around 2007, 2008, uh, uh, back then. Having lived here most of their lives and knowing that their eviction was unjust, the tenants of 1520 decided to fight back. Leading such a fight was Miss Gloria Robinson, Miss Mary Fountain, and Miss Geraldine Davis, actually our guiding mother who is right here with us right now. <laughs> Miss Geraldine Davis, who then met with Miss Dina Levy, an affordable housing activist working in the Bronx who then picked up the fight with Miss Gloria Robinson and others, like I said, began organizing, they began organizing the tenants of 1520 against this unjust eviction. As Miss Robinson and her partners began to organize uh, 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 with Miss Geraldine Davis here, and let me stop for a minute and say this, this humble woman sitting in the corner over here, okay, don't be fooled, <laughs> don't be fooled, this is a fighter. And this is one of the reasons I actually came here, let myself here as well. I used to come here like everybody else as well, taking a photo, maybe I run a class through here, so on and so on. But when I really started to talk to the, to the tenants in the building, 
you begin to see a different story with hip hop, like it's preservation. We all know the music, we all know the dance, but do we really understand the culture of hip hop? That it's not just about the music and the dance, it's about the struggles of everyday people. And this is what we want to bring out also within our exhibit, the exhibit that we're showing. It's not just an entertainment exhibit. It's an exhibit about the struggles of people trying to survive as the, and, and, and I say this, as they are hip hop. Not trying to struggle to survive while doing hip hop, while rapping, while DJing, while, no. These are the real hip hoppers themselves that never made record deal, that never made a record. Never got on TV, never got the awards, never was in the magazines. But without them, we would not exist. Somebody had to keep this place up for us to be here, birthplace of hip hop. Let me continue. Miss Levy, Dina Levy, began to research the history of the building itself, looking for any angle to not only fight in court, because keep in mind, Ms. Dina Levy picked up the case and said, we're gonna fight this with the tenants, in, in, in partnership with the tenants uh, here at 1520. Uh, Ms. Levy began to research the history of the building itself, looking for any angle to not only fight in court, but to also bring attention to the plight of the building's residents. After looking for any land restrictions or underlying use agreements that may have been forgotten about, one of Miss Levy's assistants discovered that 1520 Sedgwick Avenue is where hip hop is said to have begun. Realizing that this could be an important hook in favor of the residents of 1520, Miss Levy then got the book, Can't Stop, Won't Stop by Jeff Chang and began to read about Cool DJ Hurt and the legacy of, 15, of the 1520 Community Center that you're in here now. This legacy of 1520, the legacy of the 1520 Community Center, the actual birthplace of hip hop, then became an important part of her overall campaign to prevent the building from coming out of its initial affordable housing program to be sold to the highest bidder. So through one of the residents at the building, Miss Levy got in touch with Cindy Campbell, her sister, who immediately got involved and then began to get everyone else in the, in the hip hop community involved. Representative Jose, Jose E. Serrano, Serrano, S-E-R-R-A-N-O. Representative Jose E. Serrano lobbied with the building residents to buy the building in 2007, but their efforts failed. Going further, Ms. Deanie Levy then began to think about how to bring importance to the fact that hip hop began here. She's trying to save the building. She's trying to save the tenants from getting kicked out of the building and the building coming out of affordable housing and just being turned into some kind of property to be flipped. Uh, uh, Ms. Levy then began to consider ways to get 15, the 1520 Sedgwick Avenue apartment building designated as a historical landmark. Now keep in mind, the reason I'm bringing this to you is to give you the context as to how 1520 became the birthplace of hip hop and why. It wasn't about initially the celebration of hip hop. It was initially about saving the tenants from eviction. I think this is the core of hip hop. This is the actual core of it. What is hip hop useful for saving our people? Inspiring us to do more with each other on behalf of each other. So realize, uh, um, um, you know, well, let me just go further. I'll just keep reading. Um, going further, Ms. D Ms. Dina Levy then began to think about how to bring the importance, uh, how to bring importance to the fact that hip hop began here. She then began to consider ways to get the 1520 Sedgwick Avenue apartment building designated as a historical landmark. This is when one of her colleagues, Dr. Mark Nason of Fordham University, sent out an email regarding 1520 situation, which was picked up not only by the New York Times but also got the attention of the University of Pittsburgh, which provided the pro bono services for the writing of the application 
ticket 1520 Cedric Avenue on the register, the register of historic places. Everything seemed to be going in the right direction until the unfortunate news came. The building was sold anyway. The tenants were defeated and now the eviction was looking at them again. Miss Levy met with the new owner only to find out that he was not interested in 1520 at all, but that he was only interested in buying buildings in the Bronx to flip them and make a profit. This is when Senator Chuck Schumer got involved. The real estate group that bought 1520 in 2008, however, this group, defaulted on the building's mortgage within two years. And the building then went into foreclosure to which it was then purchased by Mr. John Crotty, an affordable housing developer who was part of a group that specialized in preserving working class housing. This was a victory for the tenants at 1520. Not only could they now stay in their apartments, but they inherited a landlord that was generally, genuinely concerned about the well-being and the safety of the tenants in the building. That man is the building owner, Mr. John Crotty, right here. <laughs> Who said, John, after acquiring the building at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, quote, I've never seen a business model that is successful while constantly fighting with the residents. This is their home, and we respect that. We're in this for the long term. End quote. Representative Jose E. Serrano had said at the time, quote, the new owners have committed to preserving the building as affordable housing and to engage in efforts to better recognize the building's historic status as the birthplace of hip hop. If taken, all of these steps will help revitalize and properly recognize this historic location, end quote. It was the combined efforts of Ms. Dina Levy, Ms. Gloria Robinson, Ms. Mary Fountain, Ms. Geraldine Davis, Cool DJ Herp, Ms. Cindy Campbell, Senator Chuck Schumer, Congressman Jose Serrano, and again, Mr. John Crotty, and the tenants of 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx that not only saved 1520 from being sold to a non-caring landlord only interested in making a quick buck, but also understood the cultural and historical importance of preserving hip hop's birthplace, making it possible for us to be here today and to be able to celebrate hip hop's 50th anniversary at its birthplace. With a round of applause, I'd like to see Ms. Geraldine Davis, Mr. John Friday, and the tenants of the building. That's why we're here. This is how we got here. The building had to be taken care of. The building is still under renovation. You walked in, you saw the outside uh, scaffolding. The building's under renovation right now. Mr. Crotty here is, is breaking his back to try to get the building ready and up for August 11th, 2023. It's a fully functioning building. And then on top of that, we're dumping a, a 50 year anniversary on top of that. We need some wow. support and some assistance, not just financial support, but skills, talents, contacts, everything hip hop has already. As we could see, the preservation of hip hop does not always begin with celebrity. Most times it begins with sincerity. Everyday working people coming together to either make a difference in some way, or in this case, preserve hip hop's birthplace, or what really develops culture, and a sense of community. This was always the original intent of hip hop to bring all kinds of diverse and different people together in peace, in love, in unity, safely having fun. On August 11, 2023, this hip hop, this, yeah, Capri, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get your mix in, trying to get your mix in now. Uh, on August 11th, uh, uh, 2023, this uh, hip-hop, this hip-hop, cultural hip-hop, 
the hip hop we are discussing is what I'm trying to say will reach its 50th year. And if you are celebrating hip hop's 50th year, then you are starting such a celebration right here at 1520, at the 1520 Community Center in the Bronx. This is where it all began. As the story goes, at the request of his sister Cindy Campbell, who wanted to produce a back to school jam at this community center on August 11, 1973, Cool DJ Herc begins his unique style of DJing called the Merry Go Round. It was here at 1520, actually in that corner right there. It was here at 1520 in 1973 that Cool DJ Hurt first began to perfect his merry-go-round DJ technique, which would focus upon the playing of musical breaks, the mu focus on playing the musical breaks of certain songs by James Brown, among others, like the incredible Bongo Band with their song Apache. It was at it was at these early Cool Herc parties, also produced by DJ Clark Kent, MC Coke LaRock, and others like MC Pebbly Poo, that the once independent talents of b-boy, well, we say b-boy and b-girl and breaking, um, graffiti writers, MCs, and DJs would first begin to come together, forming over a 50-year period the most influential urban culture in the world, hip-hop. Now, look at this community center. It can hold maybe 50 people. So when the neighborhood heard about the uniqueness of Cool Herc's jams, this room filled up pretty quickly. In fact, this room would be packed from wall to wall, literally. This is when Cool DJ Herc took his huge sound system and his merry-go-round DJ technique outside into the 1600 Sedgwick Avenue playground park, some three buildings down. This is where I live. From about 1972 to 1974, I and my brother Kenny lived with our mother at 1600 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx. It was there that we were introduced to Bronx culture and the jams. I was eight years old. Uh, yes, what eventually would be called hip hop actually begins on this block, on my block. <laughs> It was from here that I would begin to notice the uniqueness of our urban dance, our street poetry, our graffiti writing, our cutting, mixing, and scratching, DJing. At eight years of age, I had no idea what I would become some 25 years later, and neither did anyone else. But something did. Something larger than us knew what we would become some 25 years later, and a path was prepared for us. For us then, for the actual architects of hip-hop's actual culture, the 1520 Community Center is indeed sacred ground. In fact, there is no explanation for why myself, eight years old, playing in the park, going to the jams. If I grew up and was a became a lawyer, doctor, anything, business owner, anything other than a rapper, DJ, Okay, if I was anything else, none of this would matter. But this eight-year-old going to the jams, grows up, becomes KRS-One. Now, I didn't know nothing about a KRS-One or a hip-hop at eight years old, but something did. Something outside of us, something broader than all of us. You ask Cool Hurt, what made you come down here and do what you was doing? Yo, it was just us. We was just moving. Cindy wanted to make some money, so we came down here and da la <laughs> Nobody knew what they were doing. Something you should think about now, about your steps today. You, we, we think that we're doing, we think that we're moving consciously, but hip hop shows us through the real history that there's always something higher guiding you. I'm not gonna get too philosophical on it today. <laughs> But it's something that we should remember. I was here in 73. Siobhan Dean and the Dean family, Rough Riders, the Rough Riders family was here. In fact, some of them, Swiss Beats and them, their father, their parents, lent her equipment and was part of the whole scene. Graham, was it Theodore was around? Uh, Cass was around? Come on, yeah, Theodore, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Cass was around.
throughout this whole neighborhood was bustling with an energy. And I just wanna make sure we recognize that. You think you're moving consciously today. Remember, you're on sacred ground right now. Who knows what's guiding you? In celebration of hip hop's 50th year, we are producing an, ex an exclusive 1520 community center art exhibit in this room, as well as in the foyer area outside. We are producing this exhibit, I'm sorry, while we are producing this exhibit, I will be living from time to time just upstairs. Wow. While we are producing this exhibit, I will be living from time to time upstairs. Yes, I have moved back into my old neighborhood. <laughs> yes. Actually, it I'll took try. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, housewarming. Housewarming party. Yes, when I need towels and sheets. <laughs> 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 In fact, if you look at it, I, I lived in 1608. It took me 50 years to walk two buildings over. Wow. I mean, just think about that. From living here, the whole experience of hip hop that I myself have had, just to myself, then there's also hip hop itself with its own experience. 50 years. I walked two buildings down. Now I'm here. Mm. Full circle. Full circle. Not only is living here convenient for me while we build this exhibit, but I will also be teaching a series of much needed master classes right here in this room regarding hip hop and what I have learned over these 50 years. These classes are for both teachers of hip hop as well as for those that would like to become curators or hosts of the 1520 Community Center exhibit. Introductory courses and inspirational gatherings are always free. Here, we're gonna be running a series of free courses here. For those hip hop enthusiasts, those that wanna know this kind of thing, we're gonna be running a series of free courses here. But we do offer, excuse me, we do offer a more professional tuition-based hip hop course for those that are looking to start or enhance their careers in hip hop. Now, either way, you don't want to miss this. And, and be clear with this as well, those that are writing about this as, as well, this is part of what needs to get out. That a lot of times, and I'm not being critical, but I have to speak the truth here, that during hip hop's 50th anniversary, a lot of um, corporations, I should say, companies and groups, are capitalizing on the 50th anniversary. Yes. Now, we know this, okay? We, we're not new to hip hop being exploited in such a way. But one of the reasons why we're declaring a sacred space is because you know, when it comes to our actual and real culture, we always have tried to keep that commercialism and that, that corporate thing away from the culture, so that the culture remains pure and, set and I should say, um, well, just pure. That it, it remains what it originally was intended to be. And oftentimes, those who are looking to exploit the culture forget what the intent was. So we're here to establish the intent. Peace, love, unity, safely having fun. This is the intent. Now, to teach that intent, that has to be done for free. <clears throat> That you have to get to your community. That's community knowledge. And they can't be held up with a, with a ticket price or something like this, or in this case, tuition. This will be actually the first part of our courses are for the young people in the area as well. we'll put a blast out to the young people in the area. Call the young people in this area, then of course the larger New York area. But you know, somebody in Brooklyn coming over here or Queens or whatever, it may be a little bit. So we're calling first the people in this area, the young people in this area, starting with the young people in this building. If this is where the birthplace of hip hop begins, what up, man? Bless. Bless. How are you doing? <laughs> Blessing. Um, thanks for coming through. Uh, uh, and, and this is an important point. I just want to stop and, and make sure we, we are clear with this. Is that 
our community has to learn how to be a community. Our community has to learn how to be a community. We can't keep saying hip hop culture, hip hop nation, hip hop community, and then don't teach our kids how to be a nation, be a community, be a culture. We like them to birth that tone. We also gotta teach the older people. Come on, Tone. Because when we started, the older people didn't step in. That's why we lost. It. Come on, Tone. And, and and one of our first teachers just spoke. Uh, as a matter of fact, Tone is already committed to to teaching him. We've already been here and so on. In fact, the whole cold crush, let me just shout the whole cold crush, Grandmaster Cass, he's actually on his way uh, here as well. Another resident scholar. You know, everybody who raps is not a scholar of this. Every DJ can't explain what they do. And so it's important that, you know, the people you see in this room right here and those who are coming, they have this ability to explain what they did. Some have even written books, done DVDs, and so on. These are the real historians, and this is where you should be getting your culture from. Having said that, people are cashing in on the 50th anniversary. We don't mind that. Get your money if you gotta get your money. Hip hop is strong enough to withstand corporate exploitation. What we have to do though in this process is teach our own people civility. Our own culture has to learn how to deal with itself. And if you deal, and if you look at this from a, from a broader perspective, if we as a hip hop community can reach toward be, becoming a crimeless society, do you know what we would do to the United States? A peace movement coming out of hip hop? If we can influence the young people, we was just looking uh, the other day um, at some of the horror stories going on in Chicago. I mean, I'm here in New York, there's horror stories here. But the focus was on Chicago because of how bad it's, it's becoming over there. And I thought to myself, I said, man, every one of them kids know us. Every one of them know who we are, know what it is. What is hip hop's direct, unified message to the hood? So that you're clear. You doing this, you're not down with this culture. That's right. You doing this, you benefit in this culture. The benefit gotta match the punishment. Right now, or the, or the, 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 uh, the uh, you know, um, what is it called when you uh, banish somebody or uh, uh, excommunicate somebody? You know, you, you're not part of you. You want sickness, hatred, ignorance, and poverty. We want health, love, awareness, and wealth. Make up your mind. So hip hop has to take a stance and say, no, you can't be the number one culture in the world and brag about it. Yo, we the number one urban culture in the world. Then do nothing for the hood or for other music genres, other dance genres as well. If you number one, you have a responsibility to look out for number two and three and four. So we mentioned that here first to be clear about the community part of this. We want young kids in this room right here learning of hip hop's heritage and culture and how they can benefit in it. And believe there's real benefit. That takes us over to the money part. We do have tuition-based courses. Some of them will be ran out of here as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just continue uh, as, as we talk about that. Our authentic hip hop masterclass is held right here at the birthplace of hip hop, beginning with myself, KRS-One, teaching the first courses. Because remember, as I'm putting this together, there are other scholars that will teach this course as well. I'm kicking it off, obviously, but there are other scholars that will come with, come behind me as well and teach. And, and, and I'm only saying behind me in terms of history and MCing. Somebody like a Kid Capri, a DJ, master DJ, would come and explain that. And these are uh, tuition-based courses. Why? Because like Tone just mentioned, we gotta talk to the older people as well. I do put an emphasis on young people in terms of the future, but you know, we've already discussed this. Our, our generation dropped the ball crazy, okay, on hip hop, which is why it's in the state that it's in. But we've gotten older and wiser. It's now time to unite. We need some knowledge and education ourselves. 
but older people with mortgages, car note, and childcare need some money. So at the end of the day, this facility here, as well as others, have the, have the ability to train teachers and pay them to teach hip hop. Not only are we looking for our teachers, like a Tone, a Kid Capri, a Grandmaster Kaz, a, a Theodore, even though we're looking for them to come forward and teach and get paid to do it, but we're looking for the average public school teacher to come in and take this course as well and subsidize your salary. Hip hop is a billion dollar culture every year. Do you think, just stop for a minute and think about this. That this music, this dance, this way we are, our fashion talk, this is generating trillions of dollars for everybody except us. How can hip hop be a billion dollar culture and 15, 20 Sedgwick Avenue doesn't have what it needs? How can the birthplace of hip hop not have what it needs, but all these corporations have what they need and hip hop starts here? Why the kids in this building can't get what they need to go back to school and hip hop started here as a back to school program? This is, this is the point. This is the point. So come back over here real quick. Let me just read you this real quick because we want to hit our teachers. We want to hit public school teachers. We want to get the word out to public school teachers and even college professors. But we know our public school teachers are on the front lines. We know they hip hop as well. Why can't the birthplace of hip hop say, yo, come in, take a quick course. You become a hip hop cultural specialist. First tier, of course. But you become a hip hop cultural specialist. You now are certified by hip hop to teach it. And then we have a program where you get paid for it. Our authentic hip hop masterclass is held right here at the birthplace of hip hop, beginning with myself, KRS One, teaching the first courses, begins May 8th, 2023, and concludes May 12th, 2023. Our second set of classes begin in June. Every month, I'm taking one week to teach this course. To register for either our free introductory courses or for our full time tuition based courses, Go to birthplaceofhiphop.nyc. That's birthplaceofhiphop.nyc. Register there. So as you may already know, there is literally no way to tell the story of hip-hop over the past 50 years without doing so through the medium of authentic graffiti art. Hip-hop's graffiti art. Believe it or not, many of hip-hop's most memorable moments, events, events that are known by everyone, have no authentic photos or video, film, documentation to these events. Mm. Therefore, it is hip hop's most talented graffiti writers that we are commissioning to produce original works of exquisite art and sculptor, depicting many of the important scenes and people that birthed hip hop culturally, yet still have no visual documentation. We are asking about 30 artists to produce an initial 50 original pieces depicting everything from the actual August 11th, 1973 Back to School Jam that birthed hip hop, which has no photo, to the two live crew winning an obscenity case brought against them in a Florida court. No photo. Um, and also to Ronald Reagan in his younger years as a DJ. You know, Ronald Reagan was a DJ, President Ronald Reagan. Uh, his first job was W.O.C., Davenport, Iowa. Uh, they called him D.J. Dutch. His name was D.J. Dutch. His name was Dutch. And he was a D.J. Look it up. It's Ronald Reagan, um, uh, President Ronald Reagan. Starts off as, as a D.J. We, we want to show that in, in, in our exhibit as, 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 as well. Um, we're also looking to produce visual images of the crack cocaine era of the 1980s. You notice most of the time when people talk about a hip hop exhibit, they leave the, they leave the crack out. <laughs> they leave the, they're, trying to, they're trying to clean things up and, and, and be you know, all, all sweet about it. Nah, a real hip hop exhibit is gonna show you what happened. And this may be the controversial part to our exhibit, but we're gonna show you. We're gonna show you. 
what, what actually went. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me let me see some of the graph pieces. Uh, let me let me see. Try to locate the one that Shane one twenty five did. Um, try try to locate that real, real quick. Um, I'm gonna start showing y'all stuff right now. Um, obviously, you know we got here uh, on time, which is late, uh, and uh, we we were gonna um, beautify the room with some of these paintings uh, that that we actually commissioned. Uh, from from artists, but I'm just going to hold them and, and show them to you uh, as 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 well. Um, <coughs> we are looking to produce visual images of the crack cocaine era of the 1980s that had a tremendous effect upon hip hop and its cultural development. Mayor Edward Koch's failed war on graffiti. Nobody's talking about that. The city was at war with us. <laughs> first time battles, first time performances, the first time discoveries related to hip hop's further development, like Grandmaster Kazzy. Let me get that. Thank you very much. As a matter of fact, I'll get back to this in a minute. Just take a look at this real quick. You guys can take photos if you want as well. Just take a look at this real quick. Okay, let's look at that. Now, this is done by Master. Master graffiti writer Shane One Twenty Fifth. Okay, now of course he can get down with the letters, crazy. Okay, but that's not what we're asking him for. What we're asking him for is to tell a story that's not on film or photo that teachers can teach from. It's not just a photo. You got to know the culture to teach its art. To teach about the photo. And say, come on, that's right. That's right. So here we are. What is this? The Cocaine Import Agency. <laughs> now, if you're a teacher teaching hip hop, you're going to say, now, why did Shane say Cocaine Import Agency? And you bring up the whole Iran Contra, Reagan, Oliver North, and how crack cocaine got into the United States, and all of that. You got a two hour lecture just on this. Ooh, too slow, yeah. DJ, it's common sense. DJ Dutch, right? DJ Dutch. <laughs> DJ Dutch. That's right. That's right. And what you do is. You match the graffiti writing to real events in real history that's not being taught. The graffiti art part of this is the uh, uh, the calling card, uh, the calling card for the teacher. So whoever comes through to teach these to, to teach the course will start with this. Now there's a bunch in here. I'm giving you this. Uh, these little boxes. When you get close up on them, it says bundles of crap. Wow. Every one of these boxes. And they showed up and it was like this. It was this is the symbol of how it came to the hood. Like as if it was delivered on a truck, emptied out in boxes. And and here we are. Okay. You look closely, the, the um the license plate says Washington DC. Ooh. Um and, and there's more to it uh as as well. But I want to show you the style of the teaching that we're actually coming with and, and now try to imagine this kind of art all over here, this place. So the host that has trained with us, the students that will take the tuition-based course, you get trained on what I just, I gave you a small piece of it, but I walk you through 50 of these and say, here's how you point this out. Here's how you point that out. Here's the history that we're looking to tell on this. Here's the point we're trying to make on that. That takes only five days, three hours a day, five days, Monday to Friday. You can become a hip hop cultural specialist. It don't Amen. take no four years. Amen. So, I should have my gloves on. What are you giving me? A, um, So, with this, I just showed you Shane 125 as, as one artist. We're also working with, let me shout out Bio, BG183, and Nice of the Tats crew uh, as, as well. Thank you for this. Um, this is another one. Let me just put it up. 
This is the warm graffiti. I guess you gave me that because no of what I just going. said. <laughs> now keep in mind that these are the originals that I'm holding up. What we're gonna do is digitize these, and so they'll be bigger. <laughs> they're, they're, they'll be bigger, and and also smaller, like within books. Um, the exhibit comes with a book as well. I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm holding the originals that will the the original painting that will be, um, uh, you know, a uh, uh, shot or a photograph, <laughs> and. Um, enlarged or in small. Now there's another part to this that I should inform you about the exhibit itself. Those that take the course will also have the exhibit itself. Meaning that most of what we are presenting as an exhibit is art. So you can have the entire exhibit on a flash drive. Think about this. Use it as a PowerPoint presentation. If you want to spend money, go ahead and print everything out. Make your own exhibit in your own room somewhere. But you have about a hundred paintings with explanations, and these also come with side cards. You know how you go to the museum or exhibit, you see the thing up, and then of course there's an explanation. These, All of these paintings have explanations, quick explanations about history and where to go. So when the person comes in and looks at the art, they're going to be told where to go. We even have a QR code there. Hit your phone. It takes you right to the Oliver North Iran Contra. Right there off the, off the, off the screen. Uh, or whatever. Right there. And other information as well. Now this is Mayor Koch. Okay. There's some very important pieces here. This is the warm graffiti. Here's Mayor Koch. Okay. You see Lee. This was a very famous writer in our day. You see him in Wild Style, of course. Beach, um, uh, not Wild Style. No, no, Wild Style. I don't think he had an interview in Star Wars. Don't think he had an no. interview in Star no. Wars. But Lee is um, very famous writer. So is Dondi. Rest, yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Dondi. So is Dondi. We want to tell their story. So keep in mind that as a as a, a hip hop cultural specialist. You pull up another painting here, and you start talking about the history of who these people are. You see here it says Dump Koch. That was that was on the side of a real train. There's an actual photograph. This thing ran for about a year, uh, and it was amazing. It was amazing because also the mood at the time. See another DJ. Uh, the, 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 mood, the mood at the time. The, 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 the mood at the time was was Dump Koch. And what we'll do is we'll go back to New York City to Mayor Koch's reign of, of New York City and pull out his good points, what he did good for the city, and then what he, how he messed up. Uh, and, and, and his war on, on graffiti. None of this is to um degradate anybody in the in the um in our in our depictions a true hip-hop teacher is just going to tell you the truth mm, that's right. and and you go ahead and do the research yourself this like i said is a calling card we're bringing attention to the the salient issues of our culture it wasn't just a hit record or who went platinum or whose video was done by that that's not hip-hop that's the commercial Recording version artists. of us. Recording artists. That, that's, that's, that's recording artist productions rap. But mm -hmm. this right here, as a teacher, you get to explain your community. You get to explain the history of how we got to where we are. Now, this is just, like I said, just two of these. Thank you for this. That's just two of those. Um, I was shouting out bio, basically the TATS crew who is the lead graffiti curators for us uh, in this. They've done a phenomenal job uh, in, 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 in that sense. Um, let me also shout out Serv, S-E-R-V, um, and Cyanide as well. Um, these are amazing uh, uh, graffiti writers. Um, Erotica, a uh, young lady, uh, goes by the name Erotica. She has the illest hand, uh, her hand, but I didn't commission her for her hand. I commissioned her actually let me get this right here. Okay. 
I commissioned her to do something like this. And what this is, is, and in a way, I, um, table. yeah, I need a smaller, a chair, maybe, maybe a, a chair. chair. Pull, pull a chair, chair right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let me just put this in front of you. This is a small piece. They come in a variety of sizes. But what I want to do is just put this here, right? Now, what you're seeing here is I asked Erotica to, we, we, have a, we have about 15 pieces like this that's going to depict the indigenous culture of the Bronx before Jonas Bronx came to the Bronx. The reason the Bronx is called the Bronx is because some Dutch settler, DJ Dutch again, uh, a Dutch settler named Jonas Bronx. Uh, let me get out the way. A Dutch settler by the way of Jonas Bronx came here and made a deal with just one of the of the nations that were here and said, oh, we made a deal with all, all of the, the Indians that are here, and so we have right to all of, of the Bronx. Basically, they swindled the Native Americans out of their land, and basically this is what this is called now, the Bronx. Jonas Bronx, as a matter of fact, he got some other things going on with him. We may get into his history, but just like Sedgwick is, is, as well, John Sedgwick, General John Sedgwick, which is why Sedgwick, his name Sedgwick Avenue, is after a general. He worked for the Union Army. He was a general in the Union Army. Army, uh, but he has a, a, a his history is not so hot, and 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 you'll notice that, especially in the Black and Latino communities that when the city, well, at least in the, back in the day, it seems like the places that we are des designated to always have the streets <coughs> of our oppressors on, on, on the street. Yeah, Madison, yeah. Jefferson, Washington, all of these. And I say this respectfully, I'm not dissing these people, but these people were not part, they were not on the good side of our history. You know, they were on the good side of our history. So. Having said that, it's important, it's, it's very important that our children subconsciously, you get a little bit of the history. We're not hating, we're not gonna you know, bring that, but why, why are you just haphazardly saying Sedgwick Avenue? Sedgwick Avenue, Sedgwick Avenue. You're calling someone who killed your ancestors, basically. So we kind of stay away from the word Sedgwick in that way, although this is the address, 15, uh, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx is here. Now, there is some talk about changing the street name and just calling the whole street Hip Hop Boulevard. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, or Hip Hop Street or Hip Hop Avenue Tone. I'm one of them Hip Hop Boulevard five. No doubt. They're worked on changing. They're worked on now. Yeah, Tone, come on. That's right. And, and, and you know what, I should have mentioned that because I knew that. Um, so, so keep this in mind as well about the sensitivity of the history as well. That what you're looking at here is a scene of really what happened in the Bronx. Settlers came to start killing people, period. There's no other way around it. There's no way to be candy coated or nothing. Settlers came in. Now we have two other versions of this two other versions of this that shows indigenous people expressing hip hop as an indigenous culture. In fact, what we call the jam, indigenous culture is called a powwow. And we're gonna bring knowledge of the powwow back to our community, because this is what the original hip hop was. It was a powwow. Everything breaking, I'm seeing graffiti art, DJ, every, all the elements that we're dealing with today was dealt with thousands of years ago in this same area. We start to ask ourselves as well, are we the people that were here already? I, I don't wanna get too philosophical on you, but <laughs> why did hip hop start here? And then when you dig up the history, you realize how many indigenous nations were here mm -hmm. and doing the same thing yeah. that we're doing. We're gonna bring that history out. I wanna point yeah. you though to a, a couple other pieces. First of all, that's a spray can. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure that. That's a spray can. That's so cool. <laughs> that's a spray can made into a wigwam. Yeah. The original houses were wigwams. 
at least that's what they were called. So you see Dutch settlers shooting men, women, and children down. Okay, and we're going to have the history of that right next to this. So you could go and look it up and say, oh, this is what went down. Oh, this is what happened. Oh, this is what ride. Leave that here for a minute. The, the green stuff. What? Is there a history with the grease? It looks good. Yes, yes. This is an actual <laughs> This is an actual Bronx tree. Wow. This is a branch. I mean the green stuff looks I mean, the great right. But this is art. No, this is you art. You know what I'm talking about kicking free, right? <laughs> the green. <laughs> we have to have a second. <laughs> Let me show you guys uh, Let me show you guys this uh, as as well. Oh, I'll say this. So whereas the 1520 community center is presented as a hip hop sacred space with graphics and photos telling the story of 1520's development and contributions over a 50 year period, the 1520 Community Center virtual experience will bring a more elaborate presentation of hip hop's 50th anniversary as well as the exhibit itself. Let me talk about this for a minute. I need a towel or something. Uh, something in there. Paper towel. Some paper towel, yes, anything. That was Andy Rivera calling me. Let me talk about this for a minute. Um, we are here. Uh, today, thank you. Um, my good friend uh, Chuck D, when I asked for his assistance, he um, gave me the number to his graphics and advertising company. And I met with a gentleman named Malcolm Riddle. And him and his crew came here and put a presentation together that is absolutely phenomenal. They showed us what 1520 could look like online. So even though everybody is not gonna come here initially August 11th, we're not gonna have everybody here. Uh, there'll be a private ceremony as well here uh, 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 August 11th, 2023. But the, the most of the world will be celebrating with us on their phone. Amen. I, you know, most of the world is not gonna be here. They're gonna celebrate with us on, on their phone. So we're looking to do an online experience, uh, stretch out birthplace of hip hop NYC to where you can walk in to fifteen twenty, come through the door, come through here. All is virtual. Click on to a certain uh, art piece, learn about the artist, learn about everything I just said about the piece. All that's on your phone. So try to keep in mind that the exhibit is both physical here and virtual on the phone as well. August 11th, you'll be able to walk through the whole 1520 on your phone and get this, well, not the same information. You might even get more because of, of the technology. You might be able to get more information about what we're doing. But this is your pilgrimage. This is the Mecca. This is where you come to. Uh, and matter of fact, I'm going to talk further about that. But I wanted to shout out Mr. Malcolm Riddle, who is in the room right here, in behind us right here, shout out. Thank you. That is the CEO of Mad Urgency Graphics Design Company that's going to be helping us out with this as well. And shout out to Chuck D as well. Um, so, so let me now bring up the portrait. Oh, thanks. Let me let me now bring up the portrait art. Thank you. Let me now bring up the portrait art. Um, you know what? Uh, let's start with this. Put it here. We'll hold it. Put it on the chair. We'll hold it. Um, you know what? This goes back over to you. This is portrait art. Well, uh, yes, reveal it. Reveal it. George oh, Quinn. Wow. Uncle George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 
We're going to start with George here. This is a sample of the portrait art that we're doing. This is unique. There is nothing in the world like this. The artist Bradford Brown created this style. Come on, Brad. Step forward. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this here, and notice the style. There's a if, if if you walk past it, it of course still looks at you. If you look here, the nose looks off, but it's not. It's illusion. Uh, it's talking to you as as and 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 by the way, when we put it up, there is an explanation of of George of, of George Clinton's line of Parliament Funk Delhi. Uh, and also we got one of, um, uh, we, we, we will do one of James Brown. Off with George Clinton right here. Take a photo of it. See what it is. This is Bradford Brown's work. This man is a genius. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I want to thank my hype man. <laughs> um, real brief. Yes. It's this style um, came from a phone conversation I had with who, which I thought was a friend. And the story is real simple. Out of left field, the friend said, all I do is take a photo and paint on top of, because most of my work has been very realistic. I, I've worked for over 400 different companies in the last 20, 25 years. And um, I didn't understand that when you get become successful at doing anything, there's always haters out there. <laughs> at, any rate, at any rate, I got into the studio and I said, what can I do to make my work look different than everybody else's. So I came up with making it 3D and then painting it. And I love it. But I thank you for listening. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Um, you know what? Bring the next one. We're going to do about 50 of these. Wow. Uh, of people like you um, and others that exemplify our culture. Those that we the go-tos of, of the culture uh, as as well. This is portrait art. The, the gentleman that was standing here, his name is Bradford Brown. He has, uh, his uh, company is, is called the Bradford Brown Gallery. I saw his art, um, uh, well, actually last year some sometime. It's not part of this particular conversation, but um, the Temple of Hip Hop school we teach out of uh, acquired a building in Newark, New Jersey, and in the building itself was this artist, uh, Bradford Brown, who was displaying a unique style of portrait art. It's art, but it's like 3D. We'll show it to you now. We made a few of these, uh, and, and we're trying to get as much as we can get done. We might not have the 50 for August 11th, but we'll have a good sum of them. Uh, at least the icons that, that we need to present will be presented. But try to imagine these up on the walls in here with a, an explanation on the side. Uh, and so and imagine a bunch of them. You looking you, you, and you're getting the history and so on. So the last one I wanted to show you was Mayor. And this is what Mayor is coming with. I love his art how he's coming with it, how he's showing you. This is new graffiti. This is not on the canvas anymore. This is now furniture. This is now, uh, what do they call ornaments. Um, decor. Decor. It's decor. decor. It's now decor. Thank you for that, Rich. Uh, it's, it's now decor and for your home. Uh, for those of us that have homes now, you know, uh, the, the, you know, got to keep up a home with an apartment. Um, no, you want something like this in your house. You want something like this in, in your house. So this is what I wanted to say to you guys today. This is it. I wanted to show you this. Uh, I, want to ask, I wanted to ask for your support on that. Some of you, let me reiterate this, because some of us were out getting the, um, the uh, pictures and stuff, and we was all walking around. I'll bring this to, to a synopsis, some more organized clothes is that what you should know, what you should take away from this is first of all, that hip hop is alive and well. This is what you should take away from this. Let the world know that hip hop, the original culture that started at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx is alive and well. 
and kick it. Hip hop is not dead, it is alive. This is the first, this is the first point to get out. Second point, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue is the birthplace of hip hop and we're honoring this as a sacred space. This is not where the commercialism goes down. This is not where scandal goes down. This is not where theft, slander, lies, that don't happen here. What happens here, what happens here is the truth, the facts, evidence. Truth, facts, evidence. You gotta be able to come to somewhere in the world and hear hip hop's true story. There's got, you, there's got to be somewhere in the world that you go to and hear the actual story. And the only ones that can tell that story is us. And I say us, meaning that I'm so grateful to own you here, Theodore. Come on, man. Y'all, okay? I mean, Rich, thank you. Come on, Capri and Red. Red, I just saw you the other day. Uh, and, uh, no, but I'm saying that... Jeff. That, that Jeff, come on, Jeff is a story. Jeff. But, but, come on, that's a good, I gotta say Gizmo, Gizmo now. Come on, now, we just look. Well, be I, love. Look, the, the people in this room, but, but let me say this realistically, the people in this room started the culture. I mean, let's just stop for a minute. I mean, just, just, you know, if you ask any of these individuals, journalists in the room, document in the moment, if you ask any of these individuals their little story, I'll run down your bio to me. What are you about? Why are you here? You'll be amazed. You'll be absolutely amazed. The producers that are here, the DJs that are here. These are builders. These are the starters of, of, of the culture. I mean, come on, we got Kid Capri here. This is like, you know, people throw that word around, mixtape. Right. Mixtape. Yeah. Yeah. Now I got TV yeah. shows. Yeah. Got. You got more yeah. Collins from the Collins Brothers. See, I already know my man should met me outside. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the point, is that we put in this kind of work, and the ones who are putting in the work are not getting the credit. There got to be a place where the ones who put in the work can get the credit. What we're embarking on, hip hop, hip hop's culture, what it's doing currently, in this very moment, you should know how important that you are. Because clearly, as you can see, as far as culture is concerned, We're, or I was going to say, I was going to try to sugarcoat it, <laughs> but I'm not going to. We are the ones doing it. That's it. There, there technically is no one else around. We're there. We're literally at the birthplace of hip hop and nobody else is there. They haven't been there for ever really what you have at the birthplace of hip-hop are the pioneers for sure they show up and and the real pioneers the actual pioneers everybody's not a pioneer but the actual pioneers they're there and they're willing to lend um their assistance to hip hop, to the culture of hip hop. Not just a show, um, not just a paid adventure. They actually come through when they know that it's not an exploitation, obviously. Now, I know all of you know that as far as the Temple of Hip Hop is concerned, um, with its followers, with its apprentices, that it's clear in the gospel 
that we're supposed to bring our resources to the temple. Not to necessarily get a return, but it's because we are spiritually invested in the temple of hip hop. We believe in this. We believe in our gospel. We believe in the original intent of hip hop. And thus, we act like it. We provide for the temple of hip hop in order that the temple of hip hop be able to do the work of the culture, in the culture. And it's happening. That's the major point. <laughs> that, that uh, again, if everything in this gospel says what it says, and we did nothing but sit here in front of you on YouTube talking shit, it would be a totally different story. But that's not the case. The temple of hip hop is in the field. Or really in the feel. Of hip hop. For real. Constantly. Daily. It doesn't turn off for us. We're always thinking. And always concerned. With the way that hip hop and hip hop's culture is not just presented, but how it actually is. How is it? How is hip hop? Um, I got something to read out of this. I'm not sure. Actually, you know what? I should just read it. Um, but let's hold on for a minute. Uh, let me, uh, talk to the people who have, uh, sent in their tuition to join the class. Uh, shout out to you. You will be receiving, um, instructions and, uh, an itinerary as far as how the week is going to go tomorrow. Um, I'll read some of that to you. Actually, I have it on my phone. Um, so I'll read some of that to you. It's, it's really a direct message from our teacher KRS-One, but I'm going to read it. I'm going to freak the words a little bit uh, just for this presentation. Um, but either way, I'll go through it. <laughs> Uh, it will make it happen. Joy True enters the building. Shout out to the God. Um, but so, either way, I'll read this to you and we'll continue. Peace. And I thank you for your interest in this authentic hip hop cultural specialist course. I am Sun One, and KRS One will be teaching this course. As you may already know, Monday, May 8th to Friday, May 12th, 2023, our teacher, KRS-One, will be teaching a series of hip hop cultural specialist courses at the 1520 Community Center located at 1520 Cedric Avenue in the Bronx. Our hip hop cultural specialist Courses are designed to train 1520's exhibit teachers. So the exhibit that we're putting into 1520, this course is designed to teach those who are going to host the 1520 exhibit. Its curators and its hosts to answer any questions relating to the 1520 Community Center exhibit while guiding our visitors through the exhibit itself opening August 11th, 2023. 
Shout out to those of you who have already joined this. To those who have it. I don't know why you have it. Um, I'm sure life is presenting itself in a way um, of which you think you can. And for some of you, it's a very huge possibility that no, you really can't. But I want to implore to you the importance of not missing this moment. It is a very specific, important part of hip hop's culture that if by any chance, this is what you wanted to do. Now, some of you may not want to be teachers of hip hop. That's fine. Uh, or, or, and respect it all day. But I feel as though the majority of the people watching us every week in and out that you actually want to be a teacher of hip hop. And this specifically, because you got to keep in mind, we are changing the uh, structure of the community center in 1520. This may be the last time that you can actually get into 1520 as it is before it gets changed, before um, the carpeting goes down, before the lights get put in, before everything gets fancy, set up by the Temple of Hip Hop. <laughs> or it's gonna be our fly uh, that we put in the actual space but you have an opportunity to take a class in the original 1520 as it was before the Temple of Hip Hop um, beautified it. And that alone is an insane situation. Um, I've had the privilege of being in the community center several times, I've taken mad pictures um, myself to be in there as the way that Cool Herc saw it, the kids saw it, the years saw it. It's about to change. Um, Hip hop is going to another level. It's, it's entering a new phase. And to me, that you just don't, you don't want to miss. I don't want to, I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> I'm not going to miss it. I'm, I'm there. But I'm trying to um, implore to you that you don't want to miss it. I guarantee, I know you don't want to miss it. Of course, just like you just saw um, what we did on the on April 25th. Of course, we're always going to try to keep you up to date and also um, give you a, a really an inside look because you're a part of the Temple of Hip Hop. We're always going to try to make that available for you. Um, no matter whether you can get here or not, because we are, are, we're global. This is, we're an international organization. We're all over the world and we know it. So we know it's not feasible necessarily for everybody to be able to um, take time out of their life to travel to the Bronx. Um, it would be lovely, though. It would be nice. Um, 
especially when we have things going. And, and that's what you should understand. We never want to leave you out. We always want you to technically be a part. We could use the help. We're not denying anybody in that sense. But the trick says, obviously you have to have the right character come through. Um, and really, if, if you've been hanging with us for this long, there's a good chance that you, that you do have the right character. And such is why you're with us every week. And that's what we appreciate. But these moments, me personally, I would love for all of you to be able to participate. Teacher says over and over, the revolution only works for those who participate. And it's going to be the truth. Or it is the truth. What we're doing really technically only works for those who participate. We get the revelations. We uh, get the realizations. We can see the culture for real. Every time you show up to a Temple of Hip Hop event that's going on, Everybody's there. Everything's happening. The, the, we are literally the epicenter of hip hop's culture. Really of hip hop itself. We are what hip hop's doing. This is the you're not just doing hip hop. You are hip hop. So what you're doing is what hip hop's doing. And this is where you got to see if you stay home, there's a portion of hip hop that's staying home. But there's another portion of hip hop that's actually being active. There's another part of hip hop that's doing the work. There is a part of hip hop that can't seem to um, figure it out. And that's always been the case. But this is why I'm trying to tell you, you only got one life. As far as you know, sure, we hope reincarnation is real. <laughs> we hope we got mad lives coming. But that's not something that you can confirm in that sense. Take advantage of the time that you have. Come through. Be a part of it. Really be a part of it. Don't just sit there and watch us. You sit there and watch us. That's essentially, I guess, just what you're doing. Um, but I but I guarantee you and, and tell you from experience, it's a thousand times more fun to actually be here. And doing it. Creating hip hop's culture, creating what hip hop's culture does. This is what it does. <laughs> you can see it, it's on the wall. And we take it and we present it live in person. And everybody is blown away. From what we do, it's the value of hip hop. And that's what you have to get, you have to get clear with as far as what it really is. But I'm, uh, or, or to think, let me put it like this. Especially after we turn uh, the community center into an exhibit, there is no school on the planet 
that's going to have a class in the original 1520 community center in the Bronx. Ever. Ever. Or they're going to have to work something out in the future. But as of right now, it's not possible. It's never happened before. It's about to happen on May 8th through May 12th, 2023. Hot minute. <laughs> Real hot minute. It's about to go down. And by August 11th, it's going to turn into an exhibit. We're telling you exactly what the movement is. We're telling you what the hop is. That's where I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to reach a hip <laughs> and, and, and tap into your intelligence to to show you what very possibly um those and and, and not those who can't like the, the there's one side of those who who just can't I and, and we understand that and is and very likely. That's God. That's God saying that, no, it's not your time. That's one thing. But I believe there's a bunch of people that are watching me right now, listening to me right now, who can be there and are second guessing themselves. Saying, well, I don't really know. I don't know how important it is. I, uh, I'll catch the next one, hopefully. And that's what I'm trying to or, or break down to you is for one, it's a great thing. Yes. Temple of Hip Hop. Our teacher KRS-One has a great relationship with literally the owner of 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. And so the events in that sense will not very likely will not stop for a very long time. But the point is, you don't get opportunities like this. This is once in a lifetime shit going on right now. Once in a lifetime. You have the opportunity to join the first class. <laughs> the first class in 1520, the first First class in 1520 in the community center where it happened. Uh, there's really not much more to say except for the fact that, um, I just want to encourage those who are who are thinking about it. Those who are uh, wondering if they should or, or they could. But now, yeah, now, now, Temple of Hip Hop is going to be opening very, very shortly. 55 Ludlow, it exists. It's right around the corner, or I'm right around the corner from it right now. It exists. Those will be the following classes. This is the Hip Hop Cultural Specialist class first tier. This is your chance. This is your chance. If you want to do that. Now let me say to the others that think that no, doing this is going uh to lead to a rap career. It might. <laughs> it might. If you're that dope. No, it might. For sure. But. No, not really. Not really. We, we do different things around here. We do that, though. We do do that. But it. But that normally is only granted to those with a certain character. It's a character that you have. That put you in that position and really that's between you and G.O.D. 
G-O-D grants you into uh, that place. But we're looking for teachers. Who's really interested in teaching hip hop? And appreciation for it, too, at that. I appreciate hip hop so much, I want to teach it to others. I want to spread the knowledge of hip hop that I've learned and give it to somebody else. Because it's not just, um, it's not just a skill. It's technically a spiritual way of living. And uh, it eases your life. <laughs> it brings peace to your life. I would like to share that because I know what it is. That's what our teachers do. This is these are the decisions that you got to make for yourself. I thank you uh, for tuning in. This is the Temple of Hip Hop. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive school, and society. We believe, and technically we know, that the best way to preserve hip hop is to preserve you, the hip hopper. And if we preserve you, the hip hopper, there's almost a guaranteed chance that you're going to give it to your children and continue the legacy of hip hop. Peace and much love to you. I am Minister Sun One. Have yourself a beautiful week. You know what I'm bugging? Uh, if you really want to go to... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go to the class and talk about the whole class and it left out, how could you do it? No. Um, just send an email to hiphoppreservation at gmail.com. That's hiphoppreservation at gmail.com. Peace and much love. I'm Joey True. And if you guys would like to register for the Hip Hop Masterclass that we got going on at 1520 Cedric Avenue in the Bronx from May 8th to May 12th, 2023, please send your email inquiry in to hiphoppreservation at gmail.com. For Hip Hop Alliance members and those who have voluntarily paid their Temple of Hip Hop dues, the course will cost $249. For all others, the, cost will, the course will cost $499. This is something you don't wanna miss. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I hope to see you there. Peace and much love. There it is.